everybody, you're listening to the Ask BP Podcast, and today we're talking about how to use the 50% rule when evaluating rental properties. Stay tuned. You're listening to another Bigger Pockets Ask BP Podcast, where you'll hear short, direct answers to your biggest real estate questions. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets forums by using hashtag AskBP. And don't forget to pick up your copy of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing and other great content when you sign up for your free account at biggerpockets.com. With that, let's get to the show. All right, today's question comes from Brandon from Fresno, California. And he asks, does the 50% rule apply to everyone? It seems ultra conservative in my area. Brandon, thank you for asking this question. Before I get to answering that specifically, I wanna go over what the 50% rule actually is and how it pertains to real estate investing. The 50% rule basically states that the operating expenses of a rental property, this is gonna be a small multifamily or a single family residence, uh, on average over time will be about 50% of the gross rents. So if my gross rent is $1,000 per month, I can expect over time to see about $500 in, expect, in expenses per month according to the 50% rule. The next question you might be asking is, what's an operating expense? Because the 50% rule describes operating expenses only. Well, operating expenses are things that are needed to maintain the property for rent. Uh, they don't include things like mortgaging, you know, mortgage finance costs, buying or selling or closing costs, anything that has to do with buying or selling the property or financing the property are not included in your operating expenses. So your mortgage payment, for example, is not an operating expense. Operating expenses do include things like repairs, maintenance, taxes, insurance, HOA fees, if you've got them, um, capital expenditures, vacancies, turnover costs, anything that would be necessary for that property to maintain its ability to be rent ready and that you'd pay as a no in the normal course of owning the property. So with that, we'll let the fun begin. The 50% rule is a hotly debated topic on bigger pockets because it's just a kind of a blanket statement saying that your operating expenses will be 50% of the gross rents. Obviously, expenses and rents vary at different parts of the country and at different price points with different properties. Every single property is unique. So while the 50% rule may apply to your area, it's much better used if you understand the fundamentals of what's behind it. The most important thing to remember when trying to think about whether the 50% rule is right for you is that the goal of the 50% rule is to conservatively estimate your expenses because property expenses are not regular and do not occur every month. If you were to look at a property owner's you know, income statement, you might see a couple of months of smooth sailing with very low expenses, um, and you might see a couple of, of months where, wow, there's a $10,000 expense for the new roof there, or wow, wow, those tenants really left a huge mess when you had to evict them that, you know, that year. Those months where you lose large chunks of money or have large expenses need to be factored into your overall assessment of the, the property's cash flow. The 50% rule is a reasonable start at guessing those expenses over the long term. Um, an untrained investor might think, oh wow, you know, all I got to do is, you know, paint the place up, fix it up, and I'm good to go. They're not thinking about when, the, when there's a vacancy, when the tenants aren't out there. They're not thinking about, you know, that new dishwasher that needs to be replaced in six months. They're not thinking about the fact that the plumbing system is going to have to be overhauled in two years. Those expenses are largely factored in with the 50% rule. So the whole point here is that expenses can be very difficult to predict for new investors and your financial models, if you're not thinking of everything carefully and haven't done this before, can be dangerously misleading. The 50% rule tries to keep you honest and keep you conservative in a, in, a, in a large number of property analyses. Now, we're well aware that in certain parts of the country, similar structures will rent for vastly different prices. The rent for a small two bed, one bath in California might be $2,000 a month in San Francisco, and it might only be $500 a month in Memphis, Tennessee. Are the operating expenses for the property in California going to be 
$1,000 instead of $250 for the property in Memphis, Tennessee? Probably not. For example, replacing a roof. That's going to be more expensive in an area with a higher cost of living because the labor costs are higher. But the materials for the roof are probably going to be similar in cost, and the price of that construction might be 25% higher, maybe 50% higher, maybe even twice as high. But it's not going to directly correlate to the rents over that regional distance and regional divide. That same line of thinking can be applied to things like appliances. My dishwasher is not going to cost way more in California than it would in the Midwest, right? It's going to cost probably about the same. So while services like plumbing or handyman work might be more expensive in California where you're from than in other parts of the country, the raw materials probably aren't much more expensive. The result of all this is that a increase in rents, a huge increase in rents, may not always be followed by a huge increase in expenses. But you want to be careful because a lot of the operating expenses we talked about are directly tied to the cost of rent. For example, property management is often a fixed you know, percentage of rent. It might be 8 to 10 percent of gross rents. That's going to be the same whether you're in California or in the Midwest with lower, with lower rents and similar structures. Same thing with vacancies. Vacancies are, uh, by definition, exactly proportional to the rents that you receive. In addition to property management and vacancy, taxes are probably going to be proportionally similar. In fact, in certain areas of the country that, like where you're from in California, taxes might even be higher proportionally to the rent than they are in you know, other cities out east. So at the end of the day, while the 50% rule might be a pretty conservative estimate for, for people in more expensive cities with higher rents for similarly sized structures, it's probably not as great a difference as you might imagine. You'll want to check with investors in your area to really learn exactly how those expenses come into play. But remember, the point of the 50% rule is to try to account for all those expenses you're not thinking of. Again, the easiest ones to overlook are things like vacancy and turnover costs, repairs, maintenance, and capex. Those things are going to hit you no matter where you're investing in the world, and they probably are going to be proportional to the rents that you're receiving. Uh, in at least some way. So at the end of the day, the 50% rule is a good barometer for new investors or experienced investors alike to kind of get a gauge on all of the expenses that are going to be happening in their property. Yes, it may be a little conservative in higher rent areas like California where you're at, but the purpose of it is to get you to think about all those different expenses that are going to hit you down the line and those expenses that kind of are proportional to the rents and directly tied in with the amount of rent you receive. Alrighty everybody, and now it's time for our success quote of the day. Today's quote comes from Robert Kiyosaki and he says, the problem with real estate is that it's local. You have to understand your local market. I think this quote is directly relevant to today's discussion of the 50% rule because that 50% rule is going to vary. It's going to slide up and down depending on your local market and what the conditions are there. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up if you're watching here on YouTube or leave a comment in the, section, uh, in the comment section there on Bigger Pockets. And remember, in pursuit of your dreams, don't just learn, but take action. For the Ask BP Podcast, this is Scott Trench signing off. You've just heard another episode of the Bigger Pockets Ask BP podcast. Submit your question today on Facebook, Twitter, or the Bigger Pockets forum by using hashtag AskBP. And for more incredible real estate investing tools and education, including a free download of our book, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Real Estate Investing, head over to biggerpockets.com and sign up for your free account today. We'll see you on the next show.